Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Aaron Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Ooh, this one's a real page turner. Hi, this is Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 452, Books to Get You Through the Winter. And the idea of sitting in my chair by the fire, wrapped up in my faux fur throw, reading a book, it's so exciting to me. I knew you'd be wrapped up in that throw. (laughs) I pictured you just like that when I was preparing for this episode. Yes, books are such a wonderful friend any time of the year, but certainly in the winter and certainly this winter where we still might be spending a whole lot of time at home. That is true. So, I mean, it's such a great time to find some wonderful books. And today we're going to talk about design books, maybe some gardening books, and really some uplifting slim little volumes that I have come upon and I read a whole stack of them over the Christmas uh, holiday and I am just so excited to share these books and these authors with everyone because I think you're really going to enjoy them as much as I did. Oh, are these so some fiction you you brought for us today? Well, yeah, they're interesting. It's it they're these books almost are in their own little genre. They are all sort of similar in theme, but I'll dive into those in a little bit. Maybe we should kick it off with our design books, which, of course, everyone that listens to Decorating Tips and Tricks would enjoy. Do you have one for us? Uh, so, oh, a design book? Yeah. Well, most of mine are design books. Yeah. So, Nita, you want to kick it off with your first design book? Yes. And it's a favorite of both of us. I know uh, from your time in London, you love Kath Kitson and all those fun little designs. She's known for her small patterns, and uh, she's a British uh, designer that I know you're familiar with and did a lot of kids' uh, products, clothing, home decor. And this book is written by her, and it's about her home. So it's got all these beautiful interiors, the exterior of her home. And uh, she lived in uh, Block, Block, oh boy. Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it's a beautiful book and a lovely cover. And I just, I'm very excited about this book. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's really charming. So uh, we should mention, we'll have the links to all these books in the show notes so you can check them out for yourself. My first design book is At Home in the English Countryside designers and their dogs oh I, that was on mine too okay good all right i'll check okay. that one off check that one off <laughs> it's by Susanna salk and Susanna has uh many books to her name and she's also the host of the youtube channel quintessence that we all enjoy so you can check out the book and you can check out her um hosting of these beautiful videos on quintessence where she visits different designers at home and does an interview and tours their homes and whatnot. But this particular book is really charming. Um, As the title would indicate, it's all English country homes and designers with their pooches. And so you really get an inside view of these beautiful homes as well as, you know, adorable dogs and charming photos. and, And the text is really lovely too. So I highly recommend that one. That one looked so good. I, I was very excited about that one as well. So my next one is Soul of the Home by Tara Shaw, and this looks like her first book. Was that on your list? Yeah, it's on my list. It's on my coffee table. I love this book. Oh, okay. It's got lots of photos of her work with antiques, and she talks about antique hunting in Europe. Uh, Just lots of gorgeous antiques in the photos, uh, lots of Italian and French antiques that I saw. So that looks like just, I, I, I hope it's not all exactly the same books from here on it that we have. <laughs> well, you know, I wouldn't really be surprised. But, <laughs> uh, the Soul of the Home, which is sort of like my Soul of the Home. So nice title, Tara. Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, and Tara, 
was by trade and career an antique stealer and she has a beautiful home i believe it's in new orleans and she was approached by harry connick jr and his wife jill to decorate their home in connecticut and that's really when her career sort of made a bit of a shift from antique stealer to designer as well um so that's sort of interesting in her life story and her book, it teaches so many lessons. The photos are fabulous. It's a lot about her own home and then about the individual antiques. And she really is so knowledgeable. And so she can tell you the difference between, you know, a Henry the whatever and a Henry you know, the eighth and, uh, you know, all the, the French chairs and whatnot that Anita yeah. has mentioned. I mean, I... I could see the picture. I understand. And then, you know, I think I want to go back and revisit the book again. I've read it cover to cover. And I think in maybe another year, I'll go back and look at it again because it's there's a lot of information. And um, I want to be able to pick something out when I'm antiquing, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's going, it's not gonna, probably not going to be an original, but, you know, a, a, an antique reproduction of something. And I want to understand what era it's from and she gives you all this information so if you're interested in that or if you love antiques it's a great read and you definitely learn a lot her instagram is also great she does a lot of lives um so you might be interested in that as well oh oh wonderful okay, okay so my turn um arriving home by james farmer now you know, I'm not a Southern gale, but I do live in Southern California. But James Farmer is very Southern. It's a very beautiful book. Uh, it's very welcoming. Um, I love the cover house. He did have a prior book, which is gorgeous as well. But I really think Arriving Home is even better. Uh, he's It's a very relaxed style, but very traditional. I think you're going to really enjoy the book. And he also has a really nice Instagram account to follow. Mm. Well, my next book that I want to recommend is called Beautifully Organized, A Guide to Function and Style in Your Home by Nikki Boyd. And this is uh, an organizational book, which I would not normally choose because I want beautiful, rich homes that just look very beautiful. And I don't really want to see, you know, the insides of drawers and things. That's not my kind of reading. <laughs> But but this book, I have to tell you, is beautiful on the inside. So it's kind of talking about organizing. But really, it's not just about, well, I don't even know if it goes into the drawers. But, I mean, it's showing, like, organization in, like, a, a butler's pantry. And it's really showing a lot of decluttered rooms. And uh, I would say the common theme in here is decluttering from the pictures I saw and from uh, the photos. It's really about really minimizing even lots of different colors, just having very streamlined designs in your, in your room. And uh, the other thing that really kind of uh, drew me to it was it has almost 3,000 uh, ratings, and it's a 4.5 uh, star rating. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, People so I do love organization. Yes, but this is really, anyway, and the color, the cover, it's just very soothing and, and beautiful. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that one. I think that would be a great one. Oh, so way beyond where to put your rubber bands and paper clips. This I don't want that. I don't want that book. <laughs> I don't want that book either. <laughs> yeah. No, but th this one sounds really lovely. My next one is Live Beautiful by Athena Calderon. This, again, is a book where you're going to learn a lot about design. She breaks down the details of the rooms that are featured. Um, she's got decorators, homes, fashion designers, tastemakers, but in each one of the chapters or in each one of the rooms that she focuses on, she pulls out all the details and gives you lessons. So there's a real takeaway from this book. It is absolutely beautiful. It has a stunning cover as well. And the inside, each one of the homes is really, really breathtaking. I like to always like to learn a little something with the beauty. And this book, you're definitely going to do that. My next book is called The Well-Adorned Home, Making Luxury Livable by Kathy Kincaid. And again, this is a book full of beautiful classic antiques just very rich and welcoming looking 
and uh, they're just kind of warm, gracious interiors, and it's also kind of got that old world feeling. So she collects a lot of art and you know antiques. Uh, so it's got lots of beautiful rooms, and uh, I don't know, it just looks like some beautiful wallpapers too. I I'm really into the wallpapers now. I I just I want to wallpaper a room. Well, we're just waiting on bated breath for you to do it. <laughs> What do you like better in a design book? Do you like a book where it goes deep into one home? Say like, you know, Patina Farm comes to mind mm-hmm. where their home, they're going to take you room by room and get, give you probably the exterior and the gardens as well. Or do you like a book where they sort of pop around and there'll be a number of different homes? Well, I think, well, I, Patina, that's a tough one because I love all their books and everything is just top notch that they've done. So. That's not a good example because I would say in general, I like one books that have more than one home because I just feel like I'm getting more content. Mm-hmm. But I, really, I just want the beautiful pictures. I want the inspiration. I want some ideas of things that I can incorporate into my home. And I want, uh, I, a lot of times I want something from a different country where it's completely different from where I live. And uh, so I can really get some ideas because if the house I'm looking at is too much like mine, I don't feel like I can get a lot of, uh, you know, unique ideas. from it. That's so interesting because, you know, maybe on the surface, somebody would think, oh, of course, you know, if you have your sort of French country look, then that's all you're going to want to buy. You're just going to want to mm-hmm. buy book after book that is representative of that same style. But no, actually, if you see most of these books I've picked, it's a lot of very... Uh, you know, very English style country mm-hmm. homes, mm-hmm. which is in my house is very French. So, but it's, but you know how it is your house. I felt like I had to choose a unifying theme. So I chose my favorite style, which is French for my home, but I love these other styles and I've chosen muted neutrals for my home, but I still love color. I still love design. So it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I felt like I needed to narrow it down to one style for my home. Oh, right. Of course. Uh, just interesting, like what books you'd be drawn to. So so if you're going to sit down and read a design book, you know, obviously it could just be a pleasurable time and you're flipping through. But when you, if you're getting down to the nitty gritty and you're looking at these photos, what how do you approach the book? Um, well, you're making it sound so fancy. No <laughs> I wouldn't say there's approach an approach. I mean, I'm opening I'm, I'm looking at the photos and I, I'm examining each room and just looking at every little, I like to kind of stare at the room and look at every single little detail in the room and kind of uh, just kind of look at it and say, what is it about this room that I adore? And the things that just really pop out at me, I kind of think, can I incorporate that into my home? Is that something, is there some way I can do that in my own home? Is there, and because, and some things are completely unrealistic and other things maybe can be adjusted or tweaked and some other things can be exactly pulled out and put it in my home. Right. Yeah. I do pretty much the same. I kind of just kind of try to look at it without imposing my style or Mm -hmm. my home initially on it. It's just sort of take it all in and then whatever bubbles to the top, then I try to think, oh, okay. Now I'm carrying these thoughts around with me in the next days or two or weeks or months, and I'm looking around my home, how can I make that work? Uh, you know, how can I take that piece? It might not be the, in the same color or material, but can I have that same feature in my house? Right. But, and so that's the one level is what you and I are doing is kind of thinking practically, how can we make this information useful? But the other way I approach it is simply to enjoy it as a reader and to just approach appreciate the beauty of the room stories and the words and to just sit there and uh, just enjoy the experience. I'm sure you're doing the same thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wrapped in your cozy throat. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't help it. I can't help but think, boy, I sure would like to have this or this in my house. And I know you're doing the same thing. I know. I mean, as you're saying that, you're just enjoying it as you know, an observer, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like in a museum. I can't do that. I'm always thinking, okay, well, right. how can I move that around? And how can <laughs> I take that? And, you know, let me get back. Oh, I don't want to dog ear the page. Let me get a piece of paper to stick in there because I want to come yep, back and really look too. at this. Uh, uh, so my next one is More Beautiful by the decidedly American designer, Mark Sykes. And it is a really a 
roadmap for designing a happy home. There's a lot of joy in these pages, a lot of joy in the color choices and the light-filled rooms, and he just has an absolutely beautiful style. It's kind of formal, but again, you can take that and rift off it in your own home. And what I really do like about it is that one of the chapters features his own West Hollywood home. Oh. Yeah, so it's really very personal as well. So he, his first book was beautiful, and now we've got more beautiful. <laughs> so how can you go wrong with a book that's entitled More Beautiful? So I highly recommend that one as well. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60 DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt my last design book i have for today is uh, british designers at home by jenny rose Inus, and this one has more than 20 british designers featured and their homes and the thing i really like about this is what you just said it's it's their homes it's not these, because sometimes they do a home for a client and it's kind of, they bought all the stuff uh, for someone else. But to me, it's more fascinating to see what did they choose for their own home? Because this is where you can really let yourself loose and do completely what you want to do. You're not held back by a client saying, well, I don't like this or I don't like that or we're going to stick to this color palette or that one. So that's to me what I find fascinating is when I see the designer's own homes. And so this one's full of 20. So what you were talking about for someone who wants to skip around and see a bunch of different homes uh, that this would be the book for you. So I'm just talking about this pile of books that I purchased right before Christmas. And if you watched my YouTube video for my Christmas tour, I even featured the pile and I was telling everyone I'm going to dig into all these books and let you know how they are. I loved each one of these books. Any book that starts with, I am a gardener, has my heart, okay? <laughs> so, How to Catch a Mole by Mark Hammer uses those words to begin this really thoughtful, thought-provoking, and I honestly, such a simply beautiful book. I'm saying it's a must-read. I'm, I'm buying it for friends. I'm sending it to my mom. I think it's an amazing book. He 
was a mole catcher. I was going to say, is this really about catching moles or is it like uh, that he, book about motorcycles and Zen? But Oh, yeah, no, you got you to gotta go with this. I, he's this um, mid to late middle aged gentleman. He was, lives in Wales. He caught moles for a living for many, many years. And you would mm-hmm. think, why would you want to read this book? It is so beautifully written. It's inspired by nature, obviously. Uh, he takes you on this, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, journey. Uh, but he does uh, through his life. There's poetry mixed in. It's this slim little volume. I think you're all going to really enjoy it. It was Well, wonderful. would it help me catch the armadillos? <laughs> if so, I want it because those things well, are driving us nuts. I have to tell you, the mole catchers, apparently, you know, they go back to like Roman times and they really keep a tight lip on how you oh, get how a mole. to do it. Oh, but yeah, he yeah. does explain it, but I have no idea if the mole is the same as an armadillo. So Yeah, supposedly they're not smart creatures, but I'm telling you this thing's got like an inner sense. Oh, I think they're <laughs> smart. Yeah. Okay, the next one on my I suggest you really read this book list is Cozy by Isabel Gillies. Oh, this is fabulous. I mean, cozy, yeah, furry throws and fuzzy pillows and candles and this and that. All the tangible items of cozy, you know, we've got you covered with this. But this was a really interesting exploration of the concept of cozy. Uh, so way beyond the tangible. What is cozy? How does it affect you? How, what's your cozy? How can you call that forth when you need it, like maybe when in times of trouble or something, and how your cozy, whatever it is, can really buoy you up. I thought it was just an, such an interesting take. Oh. Again, a really slim volume, really charming. It's very personal. Uh, I like the way she writes. Her her writing voice is just, I think, really wonderful. You want her to be your best friend. There's even recipes in the back based on some cozy foods that she has. And it really provoked a very lively conversation with my family around Christmas time because I was asking them, well, what is cozy to you? You know, you can think of things in your life that make you feel cozy and, and you know, then why and explore that a little bit. And maybe things you never even thought of as being cozy or you don't understand what somebody else's cozy is. So mm-hmm. it, my daughter said, when I'm in bed and I can hear you in the kitchen taking the dishes out of the dishwasher and making your tea in the morning, that's cozy to me. Oh, right. And I would, I would think if someone was banging plates and just cutlery around and I was trying to sleep, I, maybe that would be anti cozy, but she thought that was cozy. So it just, everybody's got a different sense of cozy and it's just a really wonderful book. And, you know, maybe it'll provoke an interesting discussion with your family or friends well, too. That's- that's interesting. Okay. Because you know, what's cozy to me is hearing somebody else running the vacuum cleaner in my house. <laughs> you would Music a, to your ears. And you would, you would think that would be an annoying sound yet. It is one of the best sounds <laughs> I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> are we, are we just hearkening back to our last episode where we were just uh, cast a little cleaning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, still struggling with that cleaning, and we've got somebody coming. I hope coming, you so. hear that aye, cozy aye, aye. sound soon. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I don't know if the elves don't show up, it's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk about sound. Uh, the next book, and this is, I think, the thinnest of all the little volumes that I'm talking about. The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating. Now, maybe that would be cozy to somebody. It, Where do you find these books? I, I had, uh, over the course of time, uh, 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 just a Because little... there's no way you're going on Amazon and saying, I'd like to find a book about mole hunting. <laughs> I had a running list. So I had, you know, you know me and my half sheets of, of scrap paper. So it, on a half sheet of scrap paper, I had been jotting down these books from various, that's why I can't remember the source because I think it was many sources. Uh, you know, I might've heard it on a podcast or maybe I was in, you know, in some dental office or something and I was reading a magazine and I was like, hey, that sounds interesting. And I would just wrote it down on this list and I had it in my desk drawer. And I, for one of my Christmas 
gifts to myself was going to be the time to read a little bit more and relax and, and sit by the tree and enjoy it rather than, you know, running around and doing a zillion things. And so I really did it. Um, I, I read all these books over Christmas. And again, you know, they're very short. If you see them, they're pretty slim. But this one is just time is suspended. It's a microscopic exploration. And these are my words, not, you know, what the book is saying, but from my perspective, a microscopic exploration of a tiny little bit of the natural world from the perspective of a woman who was recovering from this awful illness that befell her. Oh, so a friend, I'm not giving anything away. A friend brings her a pot of um, wild violets that she potted up from you know her backyard, like which borders on some, like a little forest or something. And there happened to be a little snail in there. And he just got carted to her home and put at her bedside. And then they became companions. <laughs> and she would watch him and listen to him and see what he did and ex watch him explore the universe. And because she couldn't go anywhere, she couldn't move. I'll trust you on that one. The worst of it, you're going to know a lot about snails and moles if you read these books. I have one more. I'm ready for the next one. This one is Late Migrations. And I do know where I heard this one because I heard the author speak in when I was in Nashville, whatever that was, almost two years ago. So by Margaret Rankle. She's a New York Times opinion columnist, and it's called Late Migrations. It's another book that it's exploring the natural world while it's the same time exploring her southern roots and her family and it kind of flows from nature back to her family and that flow between those two topics is completely seamless it's a beautiful book oh yeah it's really good okay my last book oh you have one good yes well you know i love cooking so I had to get a cookbook in here somewhere. So this one is Gluten-Free Comfort Foods, a crave-worthy cookbook of familiar favorites by Jessica Kerr. And uh, it's got these wonderful looking uh, waffles on the front of, of the cover of the book. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it. I mean, they, they look like some beautiful recipes. And, you know, we're still gluten-free here. So right. you. are you, you still gluten-free at your house? Well, I might have cheated a little bit over the you holidays, <laughs> but doing the paleo thing as best I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it, sometimes it's hard to, when you want some comfort food, if you want to eat healthy or you want to do gluten-free, you've got to make adjustments. And, you know, the, the gluten-free flours don't perform exactly like a wheat flour. I mean, once you start working with the alternate flours, you realize why everything is done with wheat flour because it's such a robust flour and holds up anything and it's got such elasticity. Whereas the other uh, doughs just kind of break, you know, if it's like a bread, for example. So, uh, yeah, this one looks really good. I'm, I'm very excited about uh, trying this book, too. Well, good. I'm glad we got a foodie book in there, too. Okay, what's our hot topic? It is a House Beautiful article and it's about the new Pantone colors. Which, wah, wah. <laughs> which is a gray and a yellow. The gray is fine, but this illuminating yellow, it's really yep. unpleasant. I think. Okay, I was wondering if you were going to like that because I'm not crazy about gray and yellow together. This tone of yellow is just bad. Yeah, it's, it's a very, yeah, it's a very harsh, I thought, yellow. Very uh, bright. And I just, I, I feel like if you're going to yellow you really need to tone it down with a lot of blue or pink or something and just kind of that bright might be okay in a pattern but a wall painted that color i think i just got slapped every time i walked past it they're describing it as a warming yellow shade imbued with solar power hmm. <laughs> well it's something yeah so it's illuminating uh is what the yeah that's it's the kind color of blinding mm. yeah illuminating or blinding a uh, yellow and then the gray is called ultimate gray but uh, I don't know. I don't really care for either one. <laughs> this gray is sort of the feeling station gray that you talk about. It's not even well, a really nice remember, warm gray. Yeah, the old days when you had sweatpants and it was just gray. Yeah. That's what color this is. Yeah. It's not attractive. It's the old days sweatshirt, uh, sweatpants gray, not yeah, ultimate that's gray. It. 
Yeah. Okay. And then That's the yellow is, is kind of got a cold undertone to it. It's yeah, just, it, it's not nice, I don't think. Yeah. Okay. I, well, good. We're in agreement. Yeah. So I'm not really getting that. I don't know. I think it's almost like they just want to shock you. Yeah. And uh, sometimes they don't care if you're horrified. They just don't <laughs> care. They just want you to talk about it. <laughs> well, I guess the, the big news here was that they chose two colors. And the last time they chose oh, two okay. colors was oh. in 2016. No, I mean, the color is always important. But now oh, they chose okay. two colors. I don't know why. But um, the last time they did that was in 2016. That's odd. Okay. Well, maybe we'll, in another four years, we'll be talking about the two colors again. Yeah, who knows? Or not. I don't know. These, they, they've they got, they got to really have to up their game. I mean, if this is all they're going to come up with, I don't even know if I can talk about this again next year. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm still not sure why it even happens, but okay. Color of the year. Whatever. Yeah. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing, and it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Let's get on to your crush, which oh, that is okay. really important. This is important. So I got this catalog around Christmas time, and it's the o OKA. Do you get that catalog? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? What is that well, stand it's a, for? It's, I don't know what it stands for. I tried to find out. It's a British company, but they sell in the U.S., and it was like a little catalog. And I wasn't really paying a lot of attention to it, except that I saw this gorgeous jug in there, and it's okay. uh, called a urchin jug. So it's kind of, you know, the urchin has all those almost like a, a bumps on it. Uh huh. So that's kind of like what this has on it, and it's a blue. Oh, porcelain. like a sea urchin. Yes, a sea urchin. Thank okay. you. It's like a sea urchin, mm -hmm. but it's got all these bumps all over it, and it's kind of a nice size, fifty dollars. Uh, so it's not super cheap, but it's not super expensive either. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought this was just beautiful, and I and they also had an artichoke bowl that I was very taken with, an artichoke kind of bowl on a footed bowl, and so I kind of thought that I thought they were very interesting, and then I put the magazine out of the catalog up somewhere. And then later on, I was thinking, 
those were really nice. I just, they kind of, the idea of them really stuck with me. I thought, mm-hmm. I really want to mention those as my crush, but I couldn't remember where, who it was from. So, I mean, for weeks, I was like just looking online, trying to figure out where it was from. I finally figured it out. Uh, so is the artichoke bowl shaped like an artichoke or it's four Yes, artichokes? yes. It's got like the leaves on it and oh. it's three-dimensional. So it's got the, it's really beautiful. And it's, it, that one's white, but it's got like little leaves stuck on, on oh. either side. So that one's really, it's even prettier than the jug. So nice. I just, you know, I'm always, you know, again, I don't really need anything for my house, but these are certainly <laughs> both beautiful things. <laughs> Okay. If someone were giving them to me, I might. I wouldn't turn them down. But anyway, they're really beautiful, though. Okay. Well, my crush about is. You? Well, it's in the personal care beauty department. Yeah. Ooh. A client told me about this company, and I had never heard of them. Maybe someone has heard of them. I could butcher the name. Lange, or Lang. I think it's Lange because it has an L and uh, an apostrophe. Mm-hmm. So it's a hair care company. They produce con- shampoos, conditioners, so on, but they have mostly, I think their their product line is the uh, hair dryers and they have this brush hair dryer. Now, oh, I, I have one that I love. Is this one, have you gotten it yet? Oh, yes. I love it. Is it a smaller one of them? Because I want no, a smaller one. it's big. So it's really big. Okay. So the brush part is really big. Yeah, because I got a lot of hair, girl. So, yes. Well, I know, but I want the... Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, it's a little bit of an arm workout because it's kind of heavy. But, you know, beforehand, here I was with a blow dryer and a big curling brush. The kind that's metal with the shorter... um, Yep. No, because, you know, brush bristles, I guess you Mm -hmm. call them. The round brush. Yes. Now, this is... I don't know why it's not completely round. It's more oval. Yes, mine's oval too. I have one that's oval. Okay, but I'm telling you, I've been doing my hair. I bought it supposedly for the girls, but I was like, this is kind of a sharing thing. And if we all <laughs> like it, you know, you could all get your own too. I found with that, you have to say it's for you and then you'll share it because then if you say it's for your child, <laughs> you don't get it. Yeah, that's true. I kind of put mm-hmm. it under the uh, tree, mm-hmm. just like, this is for the girls yeah. in the house. <gasps> uh, but we're, everybody's loving it. Um, it looks like you just got a professional blowout. Wow. And what's the brand on yours again? You so, said Lange? Lange or Lang. L- it's L- L-A apostrophe. So capital L apostrophe mm-hmm. A-N-G-E. And this was a specific brand recommended to you? Specific brand recommended to me. I went to a client's right before the holidays. I was like, oh, okay. Cindy, your hair looks fabulous. She's like, I just, I bought this great product. And then she apparently takes me into her bathroom and shows me all the stuff she has. Wow. <laughs> Oh, and then oh my I took, goodness. They, I, they, I took them out on Instagram. They have a you know, pretty robust Instagram, but then they have a, um, they do just like just smother you in emails. So be careful with that, but <laughs> okay. well worth it. But that's nice. And the, the thing about it is you don't have to hold two, you don't have to hold the brush and the hairdryer. So that's what I really like about it. And, and it's it so actually, smoothing because yeah, it's, you can brush it through and it actually, it's sort of like, so if you had curly, sometimes my hair gets a little curly, if you can just mm-hmm. sort of straighten it and then control it. That's my problem too. Mine's got lots of little curls. So mm-hmm. I use the round brush actually to make the curl a bigger curl mm-hmm. to kind of smooth it out a little bit. So yeah, ooh, that's good. Well, I'll have to check out that brand. Yeah. I haven't tried the shampoos or anything, but again, my client was raving about the whole shebang. And I have another question I'm very excited about. I'm saving it for next time, but it's a cooking one. Mm-hmm. And it's like my absolute favorite thing I have gotten in a long time. So I'm just going to leave that out. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, yeah, it's really, really out. good. Okay. Good. Really good. Okay. Our question today is from a listener, Amy C. Amy, thank you so much for listening and emailing. Amy says we've helped them so much because they're a military family. They move a lot. So we've helped her sort of understand how to put a a new home together over and over again and create flow. (laughs) She's got a question about mixing artwork. She's sent us several photos of different Mm -hmm. pieces of art framed very differently and art that has a very different feel. So her question was, you know, can you sort of combine them in the same place? We weren't necessarily um, being asked about a gallery wall, but Mm -hmm. kind of like, how would you display art? Um, So what do you think, Anita? Okay, well, let me just describe them. There's two pieces of artwork that are more pastels, lighter colors with gold frame. 
And then there's one piece of artwork, very bold. It's a Hawaiian uh, vintage looking uh, travel poster, black frame, black and red uh, back, you know, red colored mountain in the background. And so very strong black and red colors. And then compare that with the two that are kind of more pastel and softer colors. So I would say, Amy, that the two soft colored um, piece of artwork could work very well together. Uh, but your Hawaiian vintage artwork, I would not put uh, in the same room, I don't think, because they're, they're very nice. Everything's very nice. But I think uh, if you put it all together, you're, you're going to end up with a divorce there. I mean, they're <laughs> just not going to play well together. And you just got two uh, different looks that are not going to, uh, you know, they're just not going to work well together. So I think it's best to separate them and let them shine in separate rooms. Yeah, I agree with those particular pieces. I think they'd really be competing in a mm -hmm. general sense. Other people might be thinking that the same sort of along the same lines as Amy, like, what do I do with all these pieces? Sometimes you've got something framed from years ago and you buy something new. How does it work all together? Well, I think you can unify them either by the, the tone of the actual piece of art, like as Nita's saying, you know, sort of grouping the lighter colors or the pastels together. And the frames could be a little different. Or you could group things and if the frames are very similar. And in, in Amy's case, the, the one piece of art so clearly doesn't belong with the others. I agree. Let's separate them. But if you've got things that are kind of similar um, in color or feel, I think you can definitely group them together. I would, if you're doing a very gallery wall, I would definitely have a few pieces that are similar and frames that are similar to sort of create a flow where your eyes kind of moving through the whole unit, so to speak. Um, that's the way I would handle it. But I certainly don't think you need to go out and reframe everything to match. I mean, there, that is a look that if you want it all matching. A lot of times you see that people do black frames and, you know, that's the unifying factor, but I don't, I don't think that is necessary. Right. And I'm just even thinking about what we've heard before the, the old rule, don't buy, don't pick your artwork because of the color to go with a particular room. Uh, but, you know, if you have a room, you don't want the artwork to fight with the room. So again, I mean, I would also kind of look with the rooms, what kind of colors are in your room. So the black and red artwork is going to go in a room. It doesn't have to have red, black, but it's going to need bold colors. You want strong colors in that room. And if you have a room that's more pastel it's probably going to work better with that other artwork, just so it's not fighting. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. So I hope we covered that for you, Amy, or anybody else that has a general question like that. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We love it. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult with Anita and I. We can't wait to talk to you.